he said, I've seen a lot of improvements. The weight has gone down. He feels even better on this uh, strict version of keto. But when he went to his doctor, his uric acid was still high. It had been high even though um, he's been on this for you know, a year-ish is how long ago this started. He's like, wow, you know, this uric acid is really um, still not come down. Don't you think it should have? And he goes on to say that he's been losing two to three pounds uh, every month uh, since going low carb, uh, but he's concerned why his uric acid is still high such a long time later. He hasn't found any references for why uh, uric acid or the crystals, how dissolving gout crystals uh, would keep the uric acid high. So what he's trying to say there is when your blood gets high and you can't remove the uric acid crystals found in gout fast enough, your system will just tuck them away in a storage center. Often that's in a joint. And when you are changing the chemistry of your body to undo uric acid in a, in a ketogenic state, you will reverse those crystals. You are backing out of those heavy crystals. So he's like, even if you account for that, it shouldn't overshoot my uric acid, should it? And he's right, that's not what, what's doing that. So if you look at uric acid, again, uric acid is the measuring, it's the, it's the um, part in your body that we can measure, that if you have excessive amounts of it, it does turn into gout. Um, gout, when you hear about it in the public, but even in medical school, you'll hear, think of the big toe and specifically that joint that I've uh, pointed out there. As you look at that joint and you get really close into that space between the two bones, that is filled with uh, crystals of uric acid that have, couldn't find another home, they couldn't get out of the body, and it really creates this inflammatory arthritis. What's interesting is in order for you to have symptoms of gout, it's usually a high uric acid of like 10 to 15 years. This isn't new for Thomas. It's been in his body for a while. But now that he's really doing all these great things for his health, he's like, why isn't that going down? Uh, many times on the show, it's one of my favorite metrics to study is uric acid. Uric acid really is a great slow changing um, biomarker that reflects inflammation. And it has got lots of studies out there proving uh, that it predicts health. If you're one metric, uh, it is, it doesn't change quickly. It is this kind of slow and steady. It can tell me how long we've been inflamed, how long the patient's been inflamed. So I really love studying uric acid. It's one of the few blood tests that in my keto patients I like to follow. It's another way of checking on them <laughs> for compliance because it does uh, steadily improve. We're going to talk about what can Thomas do to lower his uh, uric acid. So there are several medical conditions that are associated with uh, high uric acid and high incidence of gout because having an elevated uric acid doesn't necessarily mean that you've got an inflamed toe. Uh, we don't want you to get there. It's awful. Uh, but when it's high, it does, it predicts gout, but it also predicts several other chronic diseased inflammatory problems that you don't necessarily get a, get a newsflash about. It's just slowly sneaking into your system. So some of the medical conditions that are associated with elevated uric acid include high blood pressure, uh, renal insufficiency, which means the kidneys are not keeping up with the waste. They're not cleaning the blood as much as we want them to. A lot of times that's been associated with um, some high blood sugars. Congestive heart failure, also very much linked to uric acid. Um, Anything where the blood gets hypoxic or low on oxygen, which is like, well, is there, what does that? Sleep apnea does that. Uh, so do anything that tightens the blood vessels and makes sometimes the fingers go blue or white. You can find those uh, low oxygen settings uh, associated with increased uric acid. I have this study that I was going to show you because it's got a really great chart. You know, when, when people... Uh, come in and say, I've got high uric acid or they have gout, and I can see this list of all the medical problems we just talked about. Uh, instantly, you come into a medical facility and we think about writing the prescriptions that could help you. But uh, this article does a really good job of saying, hey, uh, we've been seeing the rise of uric acid for, uh, over several uh, decades. It has much to do with um, the way we're eating. Uh, and watching to see um, how this study really compared 
the the people out there who suffer from uric acid, Thomas is really one of those patients. In the uh, table four is where I think you're going to find when say, people say, well, doc, what type of foods are associated with an increased uric acid? And Thomas, a year ago, started cutting his carbs. At first, he was low carb, which is improvement in and of itself. Then he made it to dirty keto. And in the last three months, he's been very strict. He's really watched to keep those carbs under 20. He's got some high fats um, and really found that he feels the best he's felt in a long time and can't quite get his head around why this uric acid doesn't uh, match with, what's, with the way he's feeling. Uh, so you look at some of the other risks that say, if you're watching uric acid, uh, BMI, which totally gets beat up a lot uh, in the world of medicine, or actually patients really chirp about it. I like it. It's still one. It's still the best predictor of insulin resistance is your body mass index. Uh, body mass index is very much associated with both the risk of high uric acid and gout. If you look at a waist to hip ratio, again, another metric that looks at body size, those things are increased associated with increased uric acid and, and gout. Weight gain decreases, isn't that strange? Weight gain was associated with a decreased uric acid and decreased amount of gout. And I would contend that that part of the weight gain, when you read about why could that be, uh, it has a lot to do with this growth of your body. And there's still, when you get so much inflammation in that human body, it can gum up where things are supposed to be shuffled to. Uh, during a time of weight gain, they are still putting these purines, which is where some of the uric acid comes from, uh, in a place that doesn't get associated with your blood or the joint. Um, all right, purine-rich food include meats and seafood. So this is where people on a ketogenic diet are like, oh, look, I'm eating all this meat and it's causing my gout. It's causing my uric acid to go up. I really need this to go down. And I want you to be really careful about that. Uh, we'll come back to that in just a second. Alcohol, again, raises the risk of the blood uh, uric acid as well as uh, the risk of gout. Fructose, uh, which to me, fructose and the way it works in your liver is almost identical to alcohol. But high fructose corn syrup, which has been in our diets for the better part of four or five decades now, that process of increasing um, the amount of fructose in your diet, highly linked to uric acid production, uric acid in the blood, and the uric acid uh, that crystallizes inside your joint and causes gout. Other things that uh, make you less popular here, <laughs> sweet, uh, sugar sweetened beverages, fruits um, increase it. Coffee decreases your risk of gout, decreases your risk of uric acid. Uh, the dairy fats were associated, low fat dairy products, this was just, I wish, I wish this chart actually had asterisks to show you how much this affected it. Um, because if it's separated just a little bit, it gets an arrow on this chart. Uh, so it looks like vitamin C can lower your risk of gout. It looks like low fat dairy products can, uh, can lower your risk of gout. It looks like if you eat meat, you can increase your risk of uric acid. But that's where the nuance of this is really important because the changes that you saw in the uric acid and in the impact was just so slight. Like you, we barely were able to say we have confidence in that data. Whereas when you looked at the area that was associated with their weight, uh, specifically when you look at the alcohol and the fructose, unbelievable, oops, yeah, I didn't, I said that a little better. Unbelievable uh, impact when you decreased the body weight, when you decreased uh, the sugars, when you decreased alcohol, decreased fructose, all of those were uh, associated with an improvement in a uric acid uh, in the blood as well as the gout. One of the key things we've done here now is saying, okay, you've got these medical problems that increase the uric acid in the human body. Uh, you've got a bunch of foods, especially uh, the sugar foods that associate increased uric acid in the blood. And as Thomas has improved some of those foods, it is a slow, slow change of what uric acid does in the measurement. Meaning if he had been measuring this for the last 20 years, I would contend uh, his blood levels would have um, come back maybe normal on the blood test. Blood tests, again, are meant for people finding uh, a blood metric associated with a disease. So when we look at uric acid, most 
of the labs across the country, across the globe, will call a uric acid level of 6.8 or less normal. I would not feel safe. <laughs> I would never want a uric acid of 6.8. Um, when you look at ideal, like we can see in several studies that if we can get it below a certain number, it's protective or it's a, a very, it's a much better profile for a true healthy reflection. Not just it's not going to link to disease, it's actually associated with health. And that's where a uric acid of 5.5 uh, takes the stage. Uh, but my personal goal, when I check my uric acid, I like to see it less than five. I like to see it in the four point something. And that's a sign that I'm not letting any of the inflammation creep up inside my body. Had Thomas been looking at this over the last 20 years, he would have seen it snuck up out of the fours, into the fives, into the sixes, not going to get an abnormal on his lab until he's above 6.8. And I think that's a tragedy. I think that's a, it's a danger sign that's been sneaking in her system. If we really want uric acid to get out of the out of the body, there's a few ways that this happens. You can get it out by by some cells that are in your intestines. That's only about a third of them. But your kidneys are really in charge of removing the the urate or the the component of uric acid by flushing it into the urine. When he was worried that, gosh, if I'm reversing uric acid coming out of my joints and it's in my blood, it should never be above normal, right? And he's right, it shouldn't. As it's coming out of his toes or out of his joints and he's reversing the process, his gut will get rid of about a third of it, his kidneys will get rid of two thirds of it, but the slow process is a constant move towards, um, again, keeping it as low as possible. If you really want to take care of uh, uric acid and you want it to be a diet that is associated with a low insulin. Uh, so we've talked about this several times on the, on the show that insulin is the predictor of uh, many of these inflammatory processes. When I ask patients to keep track of this uh, for their health, I really want them measuring their glucose and their ketones at the same time. If you want your uric acid to go down, that Dr. Bob's ratio has to go down and stay there. So when you say, I just can't believe it's not going down for a year, I would contend that really your Dr. Bob's ratio probably didn't get better until you got to strict keto. And your life might not have allowed you to have that kind of an approach, uh, meaning you did low carb because you could handle it a year ago. And then you stepped it up and you did dirty keto because you could handle it. But if you're looking for a season that's associated with a decreased uric acid, got to lower your insulin. And the way you can measure that is the same thing I started out the show with. It's a... Uh, glucose and ketones done at the same time. Uh, I would contend his insulin probably is still ranging too high. The de decrease of his uric acid is gonna come with a decrease of his uh, insulin, not for a day, not for a week, but for a season, probably six to eight months before he's gonna be able to see that uric acid come down. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Stay tuned.